Hi everyone and welcome to Law One Gaming. Today I've got a video that was recently inspired by a comment in one of my other Stellaris videos. The person was asking me why I was using fighters on my ships as opposed to pretty much anything else. My first thought was, how dare you question me? But then I considered the possibility that this person might have a point, and that I didn't actually know all that much about fighters. So today, we're going to see how well fighters do against bombers, and see if they're worthwhile as a defensive measure against the enemy. So jump into your cockpit, grab your throttle, and let's blow where no man's blown before. Roll the intro! Like I said, we're going to start off with the easy and the obvious. Fighters against bombers. We'll begin with a one-on-one -on -one comparison of level 3 fighters and level 3 bombers, which I'm going to refer to as Mark III instead of Level. In the first scenario, we've got 30 battleships with 3 Mark III fighter wings against 30 battleships with 3 Mark III bomber wings. Each ship has no other weapons and no other shields or armor, just the sort of minimum power necessary to actually run. So, how do you think the fighters fared against the bombers? If your guess was that the fighters won every single time easily, then you're correct. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, Mark III fighters can clear enemy bombers and then focus down the larger ships, providing some extra firepower for your fleet, while the bombers can only deliver a minimum amount of their payload before being completely wiped out. In 20 tests, the fighter fleet only received about 4% damage before wiping out the bombers and stabilizing. Alright, well, let's up the ante and try a two-on-one -on -one situation with more bombers. How do you think it'll work out this time? And as you can see, the fighters end up taking the skies yet again, so to speak. Not all that surprising, that's sort of what they're there for, but let's take a look at the fighter fleet. It looks like it suffered some pretty significant damage. In fact, over multiple tests, the Mark III fighter fleet took an average of 30% casualties before stabilizing against the bomber. Okay, these are real nice tests and all, but this isn't super realistic. I mean, am I saying you're going to come across a fleet of just bombers and win with just fighters? Am I saying you're going to come across a fleet that will be polite enough to wait while your pea-shooting fighters destroy them one by one? No, I'm not trying to draw any conclusions right now. We're just taking a look at how effective fighters are against what I'd consider to be their primary enemy, the bombers. And so far, it looks like the bombers can be contained pretty well by the fighters, which is good, and kind of what we'd hope for. Okay, but let's take a look at a different scenario. Let's say you've only got Mark II fighters researched, and the enemy has Mark III bombers. What happens then? Well, just like last time, let's take a look at the one-on-one -on -one scenario first, with equal numbers of fighters and bombers. How does it play out this time? It's actually surprisingly similar. The Mark II fighters seem to have just as easy a time with the Mark III bombers as the Mark III fighters did, with the fleet suffering no casualties over multiple tests, and only taking about 6% average damage, which is a whopping 2% increase from the Mark III fighters. Okay, so let's switch to the 2-on-1 scenario. Surely that will have some significant difference in the results, right? Actually, the results were surprising, but not in the way you'd think. First, over multiple tests, the Mark III bombers managed to destroy an average of 32.67% of the fighter fleet before the Mark II fighters took over. That means the Mark II fighters appear to be only about 3% less effective than the Mark III fighters. But something else caught my attention when I was testing, as you can probably tell from the color-coded table. While testing, I made five fleets in the same system and let them fight it out. At the end, I counted the remainder and recorded the data. I counted the fleets the same way each time, starting at the top and going clockwise. The colors you see here correspond to the way I counted and the way the data was recorded in the table. Based on my results, the same fleets were having the same or similar outcomes each time. This of course meant one of two things, either A, it was just a massive coincidence, or B, there was some sort of variable that was outcoming the effect of my tests that I was not accounting for. I decided that I would consider if the variable was the positioning of the fleets, since I couldn't really think of it being anything else. So, I recreated the test, arranging all of the fleets the same way as one of the nine fleets had been arranged, and the results were that I was able to consistently get a nine result in my battles as opposed to any of the other results. So, the conclusion I made was that positioning does in fact impact carrier fights. And this variable becomes much more pronounced when we switch to Mark I fighters. 
But before we get into that, let's actually look at the Mark I fighter test. Now, Mark I fighters have a significant disadvantage against Mark III bombers. Not only do they do worse damage in the Mark II or the Mark III, but they also only have 20% tracking against the Mark III bombers' 30% evasion. This means that the bombers will have an effective 10% evasion against the fighters this time around. These differences in stats have an immediate impact on our testing. In the one-on-one -on -one scenario, 1.83 of the fighter fleet was being destroyed on average. And if we switch to the two-on-one -on -one test, we see a very different result. Here's a summary of the data. Can you spot one of the patterns that I saw? Well, Eagle Eye viewers at home probably see that most of the fleets in the two-on-one -on -one are being destroyed completely. However, there is one fleet that seems to repeatedly survive with 12 of the 15 ships that it started with. How do we explain this? We of course turn to religion, as I bring to you the God Spot. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! As you can see, in this spot, your fighters become gods that cannot be best on the battlefield. Why? Positioning. But before we really get into that, let's take a look at those numbers again. Putting all this together on average, we're left with 75.67% of the fighter fleet being destroyed. And I feel like this is actually a fine number to rely on, because it gives the right impact, if not the most accurate set of data. In most cases, you're going to lose all or a lot of your fleet. But in some, you might get lucky and accidentally wander into the god spot. Hallelujah. Now some of you out there might think that this is just some sort of weird bug that I came across, but good news! In free testing, I managed to recreate the god spot. Hallelujah. That's about enough of that. But I did manage to recreate it multiple times. In any event, this is something I'm clearly going to have to cover in more detail in a later video, because positioning clearly, clearly matters. For now, though, we have our data. In a one-on-one -on -one setting with Mark 1s against Mark 3s, you're probably going to lose about 2% of your fleet, and in a two-on-one -on -one setting, you're looking at losing the entirety of your fleet unless you happen to get lucky with your positioning. Now let's go ahead and finish off by looking at Scoutcraft. Again, in a one-on-one -on -one setting, the results pretty much speak for themselves. An average of 8.33% of the fighter ships are going to be lost to enemy bombers. And in the two-on-one -on -one setting, we see that the bombers will easily destroy the scout craft. Also, as a small caveat, I did also have one of the scouting fleets positioned in the god spot. And as you can see, while the fleet did not survive, it did last the longest. So, now we've got our data, let's explain the results. First, let's take a look at the actual stats of each fighter unit. Mark III fighters deal 4 to 5 damage, Mark II deal 3 to 4, and Mark I deal 2 to 3, with scouts dealing 1 to 2. There's also a 10% difference in tracking between each level, which matters more as you face more advanced bombers with higher evasion. Otherwise, the only differences between each variant are defensive, with each getting additional hit points and 10% more evasion as they go up through the levels. So, assuming we're fighting Mark III bombers, our effective damage comes out as follows. And here, we can see why Mark II fighters perform similarly to Mark III fighters, since the average number of shots to kill an enemy bomber is roughly the same. And when we go to Mark I fighters, we see a sharp increase in the average number of shots required, and this gets even worse when we go to scouting craft. And our final results seem to reflect as much. So what does this mean in practical terms? Well, for starters, if the enemy is sending a large amount of bombers at you, you will be able to effectively counter them with fighters. It's what they're meant for and you can probably get away with using Mark II fighters if you're short on power for whatever reason. You can also use fighters to stabilize effectively and disable the enemy bomber carriers. Even if the enemy jumps away once they've been disabled, they're going to take 25% emergency jump damage while your fleet will only take minimal damage. Again, using a 1 to 1 match is likely overkill, and you could probably get away with using a 2 to 3 bomber kind of combo, saving your third hangar wing for your own bombers or another weapon slot entirely. In general, fighters are clearly a defensive weapon. They're a specific counter to render an attacking fleet ineffective. They will stabilize a fight in your favor, and be able to provide some additional repeating damage over the course of the fight. Lastly, as we've seen, positioning does matter. Engaging enemy bombers from the right direction will give your fighters a significant advantage, which we'll cover more in a later video. So wait, that's it? We're done? Didn't you say something about missiles and torpedoes, or what if the enemy has both bombers and missiles, or what if the enemy has flak or point defense? For God's sake, what about amoebas? Well, that's a lot of testing, and if I were to test everything in this video right now, it'd probably end up being about an hour long, probably even longer. 
So for now, rest assured that I will cover these topics in future videos, and hopefully we'll one day have a comprehensive guide to combat in Stellaris. But for now, I feel I've confidently answered the question of why fighters ever? Why? And now you know. And don't ever question me again. Goodbye! Enjoy the video? Well, hey, you should consider subscribing, or maybe checking out some of these other videos. Or, hey, why don't you leave a like? It'll help the channel grow. Or, you can leave me a comment, maybe give me an idea for another video. Anyway, I'll see you next time.